My name is Perry Larson. I've been a consultant here for about uh, 10 years. And uh, as you know, we're going to talk about Microsoft Dynamics workflow today. And so what I'd like you guys to do is just introduce yourselves and uh, let us know your name, the company that you're working with, and your position at the company. So Rob, you can start off. You guys know who I am. Mm -hmm. Rob. Rob, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm uh, Rosa Villaseda, and I work at DATC. And I'm accountant. I'm a consultant. Captain Salisbury, I work here. I'm a consultant. I'm a consultant. I'm Janet Fripp. I work for Arcom and I'm a controller. I'm Renella Fripp. I work for Welcome, everybody. So, those of you on the phone, would you mind taking a second and introducing yourself so we know who we're, who's listening to us? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it sounds like we're not going to be able to hear your questions. We'll have to have, if you have questions, you can type those in and Andy will pick those up and forward those to us. So we're going to go ahead and start our presentation. Okay, so what is workflow? Have any of you seen it before or talked about it? Any? Oh, so you're an expert? No. <laughs> So when I have a question, I can ask you. Oh, well, that was Renell, by the way, who's, who's a semi-expert on it. <clears throat> anyway, workflow is the approval process for a document, for a master record, or for a batch. The workflow defines how they will flow through the system, and by the system meaning Great Plains uh, GP, uh, and by showing who must approve it, and the conditions under which they must approve or perform another action on it. So there's different parts of workflow. There's three main components for uh, workflow. The first one is Microsoft Dynamics GP, and you're all familiar with that. The users and approvers uh, interact on documents, batches, or master records by entering approving, and then finally posting. Then there's another component, SharePoint. Are you guys all familiar with SharePoint or is that something new? Uh, SharePoint is another uh, program that Microsoft has created and it's uh, essentially a collaboration program and, and it's just becoming more and more prevalent, a lot of functionality within SharePoint and it's a website. And when this module is installed, a workflow website is created. And this website is built on uh, Windows SharePoint Services, SharePoint Server, or SharePoint Foundation. And you access it using a browser. Now, earlier versions of, of the workflow required that you have a full-blown SharePoint Server install. But the newest version allows you to use the SharePoint functionality that's just built into the newer servers. So you don't have to have a, a full-blown SharePoint server if you don't want to. Uh, the workflow administrators and managers can use this website to set up the workflow system, create individual workflows, or generate reports. And individual users can use this website to approve the documents and batches that are assigned to them. The next component is Outlook, and you're all familiar with Outlook. So this is kind of a go-between those two systems. So when a document or a master record or a batch is assigned to a user for approval, an email message and a desktop alert can be sent to those users. The email message displays information about the document, master record, or batch that has an edit this task link. And when the user clicks on that link, a window appears where the user can approve or reject the task or ask for a change. And there's a couple other options as well. Now, it's not just approvals that go into Outlook. It could be notifications. Okay, so you may want a third party just to view what's going on so they'll just be keep informed. And really, the whole workflow system is, is uh, open, so you design what fits to your company. So, and we'll look into that in a little more detail. So there's a lot of, uh, potentially a lot of traffic that can go back, 
back and forth notification of what's going on through the workflow. Yes? Mike, um, when you use group-wise, will that work? I don't know that that will work. Well, I'd have to do some research on that. We can fix that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Microsoft functionality kind of likes to play with Microsoft stuff, so it may not work, but we'll have to research that. <clears throat> now, you can uh, use workflow without using Outlook. Uh, you can have it all inside of Great Plains, but there wouldn't be the automatic notification if that's what we have to have. Oh, yeah. And so uh, if we can use GroupWise, then it would work. If not, we'd have to use Outlook. Okay. Okay. So when you set uh, workflow servers up, there's uh, a number of different ways you can do it. You can have a single server that has Great Plains on it, has SharePoint on it, has Outlook, or you know, just everything all combined into one. Or you could have a separate web server that has web services, SharePoint, and Workflow on that web server. Or you can have multiple servers, the back office server for Great Plains, an application server, and multiple web servers. So you can figure this depending upon the traffic you expect to have with this. And you know, Terry and Andy will help you plan that if you decide to implement uh, workflow. So we talked about the different types of workflow. And built into the workflow, there's some specific types of workflow available. At the document level, we have a purchase order approval or a sales quote approval. At the batch level, you have a general ledger batch, a payables batch, or a receivables batch. And at the master record, you have a customer credit limit approval, a new vendor approval, or an employee, a new employee on board approval. We can't. You mean at the PowerPoint? Oh, no, you're we can make that available online. Oh, yeah. Now there, there's a, a third or a fourth type of workflow, and it's called electronic signatures. And electronic signatures, have any of you heard of that before in relation to Great Plains? It's a module, a separate module available that you can <coughs> actually select a window or fields on a window to have uh, approval capability so anybody just can't go in and, and change it. They have to have this approval to change that. And it tracks who's the person that makes that change. And it interacts with a workflow to facilitate that process. Now we're not going to look at that today because we don't have electronic signatures installed on this server. So, But just to know that it's available. So if there's some area inside of Great Plains you want to put workflow you can use the electronic signatures to accomplish that if it's not in the out-of-box capability. So some of the benefits of using workflow, you have consistent and efficient processes. So if you want, every time you get a new customer, if you want to make sure that, that uh, or excuse me, a new vendor, that everything is set up correctly, you can put it through the workflow and you know that these steps have to be followed in order for it to transpire. Or if you want every purchase order to have certain types of approval before it goes out to the vendors, you can make sure it goes through with the, uh, the workflow. You have the automatic notification, so if you have a user create a new purchase order, they don't have to physically take the purchase over and get somebody to sign off on it, the approval notification goes to that person and is taken care of for you in the background. And you can uh, you have access through SharePoint Server and Outlook. So you don't necessarily have to log into Great Plains to do the approval, but you can. So it gives you a lot of options. And one of the things I've noticed is that there's so much flexibility here that you'll want to do you know, quite a bit of planning to make this really work for your company so you don't 
make it harder. You want to make it easier rather than harder to do this. So inside of Workflow, there's different types of users or participants that will, will do some of this functionality. And at the top level, there's the Workflow Administrator. And then you have potentially a manager over each type of workflow. So that manager could be the same person or it could be a different person depending upon how diverse your company is. But the workflow administrator has uh, responsibilities for everything and then you can narrow it down a little bit to the workflow manager just say for new employees. He keeps track of that one but he doesn't look at the purchase orders for example. Then you also have originators. And these are the people who are actually entering the data into the system. And then you have the approvers, the people who will approve. And you can have the same person be both if you want to. And there's a facility so that if an approver is an originator, it can be sent to an alternate person to approve. So you don't approve your own stuff if you don't want to. And you can also create delegates, which are approvers, so that if uh, John Doe doesn't want to approve, he can delegate that to somebody else. And then you also have users that would have read-only access and notifications. So if you want somebody just to be able to see this or get notification but not do anything on it, that can be set up as well. Just a delegation, something that the author out on vacation for a week and the TV on off. Yeah, yeah, you can just switch that over. Uh, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can also create a pool of, of approvers and so that you only need one of those approvers to approve it and the notification goes to all of them. Or you can set up that pool of approvers that the majority has to approve or you can set it up so that everybody has to approve. So you would have a lot of control of how you want to set that up. And feel free to ask questions. You jump in at any time. So. You know, you may forget after five minutes. I know since I, you know, you reach a certain age, you just forget everything, you know. <laughs> so the, the way in which you would create a, a workflow and configure it, the first step would be to plan the workflow setup. And you would want to talk with a lot of different people in your company so that you make the process, like I said, easy for everybody involved. You don't want anybody to feel like they have more work. You want to make it easier for them. And then you would select the type, of course, that you want to work on. And then you'd have to give it a name. And then you select the workflow originators. Now this can be fairly simple. You can say anybody. So if you have this process, anytime anybody does it, always set a workflow. or only when these people do it. So you have flexibility there as well. Then you set up the workflow steps. And there's two types of steps you can have in the workflow. The first obviously is an approval, but you can also put an action in there. And so you may want to put an action before you put the approval step so that they're supposed to call and check a, a, the credit on a new uh, customer. And once that action's been done, then it'll move to the approval step. So you can put the action step and you can put any combination of these. And we'll look at some diagrams of the of ways you might want to set this up. And there's really probably not a limit, only your imagination on how you want the flow to work through the system. Then if you want, you can so specify the final approver. And the final approver would be in cases where you have multiple steps or potentially multiple steps. And you will also indicate if the approvers can manually delegate their tasks or not. So you can require that it always has to go through one approver and they can't delegate. You, I mean, you risk creating a bottleneck, but you know, you can do that. Then you'll want to define escalation. So when you, when you create these steps, you give it a time frame for the step to transpire in. So if you want it to be um, accomplished in two days, you know, it has a window there. And as soon as the two days are up, then you have to tell it what you want it to do. It can 